I S U P K. This is School of Universal Practical Knowledge established in 1969 in One West Harlem, New York. And since then, we've been bringing the truth to you so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, and you so-called Native Americans. Now again, we use the term so-called because black is a color. Hispaniola is the name of an island. Native American is a term. According to archaeological, geographical, as well as biblical facts, you make up the 12 tribes of Israel. So anytime you open up this book, so-called black man, so-called Hispanic man, Native American man, and woman, you are actually reading about your past, your history, the law, statutes, and commandments that were given to you and you alone, as well as the greatest black man to ever walk this earth, the one you refer to as Jesus Christ. And yes, for those of you watching this for the first time, Christ was a so-called black man. All these things can be proven. All right, so if you ever have any questions, reach out to us. Area code 206 778 1859, or you can go to the website isupk.com. We have online classes Tuesday to Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific time to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tuesday class is the Brotherhood, Wednesday is the Law, Thursday is Scriptural Breakdown, Friday is the Hebrew Language. Monday morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Again, all these things are Pacific time. We have General Hazanyan with Let a Hebrew Speak. Speaking on various topics, everything that pertains to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and of course is scripturally based, all right? We also have Commander General Yohanna with The Grill, the livest radio show on earth, and that's 6 p.m. to um, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Same format. Everything that, touch, uh, everything that has to do with you, all right, scripturally based, of course. We also have the radio show Israelite Vibes. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday night, Captain Tazariak and Officer Kataza. Again, following that same format. So, for any questions about these things, the radio shows or the classes, you reach out to us, okay? Uh, today's topic is going to be Life is War. Which, at this point, you can kind of recognize. But we're not just talking about the physical war or the carnal war that goes on. We're actually talking about the spiritual war and how it affects you. All right. So first and foremost, let's go to the book of Exodus just to show you who the Lord is. All right. Because what we have to do is we have to start learning how to follow in the ways of the Lord. All right. Because people think that because of Christianity, you believe the Lord is some nice, kind, loving, holds the bunny rabbit, holds the lamb here soft-spoken that's how you view the Lord that's how you, you view the Most High God and that's how you view Christ and this is because of Christianity that was pushed by the so-called white man who is the devil according to the Bible and who is a mortal enemy to you and if you don't know that then turn on your TV today and witness another murder that takes place at the hands of a so-called at the hands of the so-called white man all right or just look into everything that's been set up to keep us in a state of despair. That's another lesson, but you get the point. The white man is the devil according to the Bible. So now we're going to go to the book of Exodus. Uh, chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. Alright, so he's not some sissy. He's not some punk. He's not some homosexual. Alright, he's not soft. He's not walking around carrying lambs and bunnies and rainbows over his head and 
little kids dancing and prancing around while he's half naked. All right, that ain't Christ, and that is not the Most High God. We just read 15 and 3, the book of Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. So if we're his children, if you consider yourself his child, that would mean that you, your father is a man of war. That means that you would be a man of war because you will walk in the light of your father. All right. Now we're going to we're going to go into scriptures on why this is necessary in these days and times. All right. And for the record, if you if you really want to be taught how to become a warrior in this, you come to our school, ISUPK, under Commander General Yohana, and you learn these tools, these tactics of warfare. So you'll understand how to combat all the things that are set up to fight you. There are, there are many things. If you are, let me hit you with this. If you are addicted to drugs, you are losing the war. All right? If you are a homosexual, you are losing the war. If you are if you're a woman aborting our babies, you are losing the war. If you are a whore, you are losing the war. Okay? Everything that you do that you know somewhere within is contrary to the well-being of our people as well as to the principles that were laid down in this Bible, and your movements are contrary to that, then you are losing the war. And that's why it would behoove you to get into our classes so we can teach you how to get off of these things. We can teach you how to get off of drugs. Sister, we can teach you how not to be a whore. Brother, we can teach you how not to be a homosexual. All right? We can give you the tools necessary. So when you read the scripture and it says the Lord is a man of war, you will understand that because you will understand the tactics of warfare. You will understand how to fight. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go, go to Christ now to show you that Christ was on the same page as the Most High God. All right? This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 10 Verse 34, scripture reads, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. That's Christ telling you that right there. That ain't that walking around with half a sheep, carrying a lamb, little kids dancing and prancing all around him. That ain't him. This is the black man Christ. The true Christ. The true Messiah. Our true King. Alright, we're going to read it from the top. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. You hear that? That's our king. That's how our king talks. Our king is a man of war. Alright? I'm going to bring out another scripture. And this is, I'm going to bring out another scripture just to further stamp that he's a man of war. And then I'm going to go into the tools necessary so you understand how to fight your demons. All right, but we need to get that foolishness out of your mind that Christ is some soft punk. We got to get that out of your mind because that ain't who Christ is. That ain't the Christ of the Bible. That's the Christ of Christianity. That's that homosexual white man, Caesar Borgia, that the Christian church has put forth, that the so-called white man who is the devil has taught you, taught your black preachers, taught your Martin Luther Kings, your Jesse Jacksons, your Al Sharptons, and they're running around, got you accepting everything now because of the so-called white man and his agenda to keep you as a slave all right so you won't understand that your king is a warrior so you won't understand that the lord the most high god is a man of war and in turn you won't be warriors but you'll be a soft homosexual man that will accept everything that's given to you all right strung out drug addicts Abusers of our women, abusers of our children. That's what they want you to believe. Because that, if you don't understand this, that's what Christianity teaches you. You may not understand this. But when you look at Christianity in its totality, it teaches you everything that leads to our destruction. Alright, so we're going to put one more scripture about Christ. One more. Just to show who Christ is. This is Christ, alright. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's how Christ spoke. So I just pulled that out to stamp out that idea that you Christians out there think of Christ being that soft, effeminate white boy. All right? This is a strong black man, the strongest black man, the greatest black man to ever walk this earth. Our king. Okay? 
So now what we're going to do now is go into tools that you need. Alright, we're going to go into the book of 1 Peter. Because we're, we're all fighting particular demons that lead to our destruction. But what we have to understand is when we, we succumb to these demons, we can't be um, confounded by the consequence. Alright, so now this is the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So let's break this down. A crack addict can't think that is strange or think um, I don't understand or I'm puzzled or confused on why my family doesn't trust me. You're a crack addict. Or why you're homeless. You're a crack addict. This is why. Because this trial that's been set up to try you, this fiery trial that's been set up to try you, you're not fighting back. You gave up. You're losing that battle. And in losing the battle, this is the consequence that comes with losing. So again, beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't be confused. You're addicted to crack and everything that comes with the addiction of crack is going to afflict you. If you are HIV positive, well, it's a good chance you've been living some kind of promiscuous, li promiscuous lifestyle. Be you a homosexual or be you just a whoremonger or a whore. Or you were maybe sharing needles with somebody. Or even if you women out there, you give birth to a baby that, was, that is already HIV positive, it's because of what you were doing. So don't think it's strange. Don't ask the Lord, why did this happen? What you need to ask the Lord is, how do I change? All right? And that's the tools that, that are left here in this Bible. That's the tools to understand how to fight this war. These are the war tactics. Again, we read, the Lord is a man of war. Well, it would make sense that his sons are warriors. And the sons that are warriors would teach his family how to war. And that's what we are setting up here in the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge under Commander General Yohanan. And that's another reason why we have uh, titles like generals, captains, officers, because all that is scriptural, and we understand that this is war. All right. So from there, we're gonna uh, go to the book of Timothy, First Timothy, and we're gonna go to chapter six and verse twelve, because what you need to learn are the tools. Okay, we will show you everything you need. We showed you why you're going through. The scripture shows you why you're going through what you're going through. If you're a crack addict, if you're a drug addict, if you're a whore, whatever it is you're going through. If you're a gangbanger and you're out there in your neighborhood and your, uh, your rival gang rolls up and busts at you and you get shot, you need to understand that happened because of your lifestyle. So don't think it's strange. Don't sit up in that hospital bed, crippled now, wondering, Lord, why did this happen? You were gangbanging, all right? You actually were at war with your brother. You don't want to go through that, put down the pistol, take the flag out your pocket, and then understand that the so-called black man, so-called Native American man, Hispanic man, are your brothers, all right? So now... We're going to give you tools to learn how to do this. This is the book of uh, first, uh, excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. That's the first thing. Fight the good fight. Meaning you, you're trained to do this. Meaning you understand whom you're fighting. Alright? Meaning you understand why you're fighting. And it's of faith. Meaning that you know that you are doing it in accordance with these laws, statutes, and commandments. In accordance with what the Most High God left and what Christ brought forth for us as a people. 
and it even goes further. We're going to go into it. Lay hold on, lay hold on eternal life because this is what eternal life is. Eternal life is the kingdom. All right, eternal life is you no longer waking up as a slave. It is our people as a collective, our nation, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native American, men and women. We are no longer the bottom of the barrel. We are no longer strung out on crack. We are no longer suffering from every disease. We are no longer hungry. We are no longer murdering each other. All right? That's eternal life. Because everything I brought up is something that is a symptom of every ghetto in America. Every slum, barrio, reservation, from here through Central America to South America as well as the Caribbean islands. We suffer from all these symptoms when eternal life is us not suffering from those anymore. That you are no longer at the bottom of the barrel. That you are no longer the first, uh, the last hired and first fired. That your women no lo are no longer whores and out of order. Alright? That's eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now this is a profession. And like any profession, you have to be taught. You can't just go into the hospital and tell them you're a doctor. And they're going to hire you on as a doctor. You have to be trained to be a doctor with credentials. Well... You want that training, you come to the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. No place on earth has better credentials than us. Alright? You want to learn the good profession, you come here. And you get taught this. And this is how you will fight. This is how you will uh, get off of drugs. This is how you women will stop being whores. Alright? This is how you will learn how to love your brothers and love your sisters. And this is how our nation will be raised up as a nation. Not a group of niggas, not a group of essays, not a group of Indians, not some blood, some crips, not some vatos, none of that. As a nation. Alright? So from there, we're going to go into love. Because the number one tool we have is love. Alright? That is the number one thing we can use in this battle that we are in. And we're not talking about emotional love. We're not talking about that white man love. I love you and I hug you and we're not talking about that crap. That's just an emotion. That's no different than what you get when you get high. At that moment that you're high and you're at that point that you are seeking, you are in love. All right. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is the principle. All right. And that's the problem. We don't know what love is. So we act upon what we think love is. Imagine this. You could meet a chick in a club and you could fall in love with her that night. And for two, three weeks, you two are the tightest of, of people. But that fourth week, you understand. This ain't what it is. Alright? And that's not love because love doesn't dissipate. Love, the, love can't be destroyed. Love is a principle. Alright? Love just doesn't disappear. And love is not a lie. Which for the most part, when you meet baby girl in the club, you are living some sort of a lie and she is too. Alright? So now we're going to go into love. Uh, first we're going to go to the book of 1 John. No. 2 John. We're going to go into 2 John. 2 John 1 and 6. Because we have to understand how to love each other. Alright. 2 John 1 verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. And that's how we love each other. That we walk after the commandments of Christ. Because Christ told us, love thy neighbor as thyself. But when you break down that word, in this context, it's talking about your brother. To love your brother as yourself. Let me hit you with this. In order to love your brother as yourself, you got to understand how to love yourself also. And that's where we fail. That's why we'll get strung out on drugs. That's why our women will become whores. That's why our men will become homosexual. That's why it's easy to gang bang. That's why it's easy to sell dope. Because we don't even love ourselves. Alright? And it's understood why. But what we have to do is get out of the why and come to the solution. And this is the solution. 
And this is love, that we walk after his commandment, commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in. And we've been told this from day one. Love thy neighbor as thyself. All right? That's how simple this is. Okay, so from there, now we go to 1 John. Chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So, that's how you love the Most High God. You keep his commandments. How do you love your brothers and your sisters? You walk after the commandments. And these are the number one tools to fight off this war. Okay, because again, when Christ said, love thy neighbor as thyself, you have to love yourself. And if you love yourself, you'll understand that drug addiction is self-hatred. That homosexuality, whoredom. Gang banging. Every, every, every other thing that our people suffer from in these ghettos, barrios, and slums is hatred. That's the first thing you have to understand. Once you get out of, out of that and you understand who you are and what your responsibilities are, then you'll learn how to love. Then you'll understand the necessity of brotherhood as well as sisterhood. These are the tools to fight against everything that's afflicting you right now. If you are a drug addict, this is how you break that addiction. If you are a homosexual and you are tired of that lifestyle, this is how you break that lifestyle. Sisters, if you're a whore, this is how you change that. Sister, if you want to abort your baby, you're over there contemplating on aborting your baby. This is how you fight that. You come to us. We teach you what love is. And even if you don't, you still don't want the baby. You know what you do? Birth that child. And you give that child to us if that child is Israel. And we will father that child and raise that child up in love so that child won't be fighting the same demons that you're fighting. And that is what the scripture means by fight the good fight. Alright? So again, like the, scripture, like the scripture said in Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord is a man of war. And what you need to understand that this life right now that we're living is war. And so-called black man, Hispanic man, Native American man and woman, you are losing. So if you need help on this, you need counsel on this, reach out to us. That is why we are here. Alright? Any man that wants to become part of this UPK, get into our classes. Three months. Show your discipline, your diligence. Receive a Hebrew name and become a trooper. Then fulfill the responsibilities that come with the trooper. Do that for three months. Show your discipline, your diligence. Your diligence. Take the officer's test. Become an officer. Teach these lessons. Go out there in them corners and cry aloud. Like scripture, the scripture tells you in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud and spare not. Become part of our programs. We have prison programs. We have GED programs. We have um, food programs. Come start taking care of our people with us. Come and start fighting this war with your brothers. Alright? Put your all black on. Put your boots on. Lace up and let's get it. You sisters out there, y'all want to become part of this? Come to our classes for six months. Get a Hebrew name. During that period, that six month period, you will speak with no man. Aside from getting greeted and the teacher of that class or the head of that school. After that six month period, you receive a name, there's a brother that you're interested in or a brother that's interested in you, you start a courtship period that lasts another six months. Because we don't throw away our women. Once you and brothers, once you and this sister come together, or sister, you and this brother come together, the union is set. Save adultery. Meaning, sister, if you don't commit, as long as you don't commit adultery, that's your husband. He cannot throw you away. And we hold on to that. Our women have been through enough. We done drag y'all through the mud. It's time to build y'all up just like we're building these men up. And get our nation together. Alright? Lastly, but most important, last but not least, let me say it that way. Last but not least, pay your tithes. Okay? So with all that said, any questions, you reach out to us. ISUPK.com or area code 206-778-1859. Shalom.